even if the claim by Minister Terry Long that these posts were done by an officer in his staff are true, that does not exempt the minister from... Bless up, bless up my people. Welcome back to the channel. It's a girl and Isabel Rose. Thanks for all the new subscribers. Thanks for returning subscribers. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Turn the post notification bell on. Put it on all so you won't miss an upload from me on the road to 20k help me to get there my people so in this one my people junior minister on foreign affairs alando terrellong faces heat over controversy of you know disrespecting former prime ministers on his social media instagram as well as juliet holness to gain the post of minister of works stay tuned for the details at hand don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel Run go over to my other platform. Subscribe over there, get that channel to 1k for me, please and thanks. So my people were seeing these two photos making their rounds on social media where we seeing the junior minister of foreign affairs, Alanda Terrellong, you know, speaking to someone and uh, you know, these pictures were posted to his Instagram where we look in the back there, you see all of the Prime Ministers of Jamaica and they blotted out the two People's National Party Prime Minister, that's Percival James Patterson and Portia Simpson Miller. In this other one we're seeing Portia Simpson Miller, you know, giving him a hug and that is what she is really known for. She loves to give hugs and she's indeed a pleasant person whether you are a supporter of the people's national party or not that's the whole you know persona of her and many are ticked off to say you know why was those photos posted and you know blotted out those other former prime minister of jamaica it didn't sit well with many jamaicans in the diaspora and even in Jamaica and we're seeing him take to his Twitter to make some tweets and it reads I was advised of stories posted by one of my team members with access to my social media not in keeping with my style of posting he was instructed to remove all stories posted to the account immediately and I have since removed him from access to all my social media accounts the stories posted are indeed regretted and, as stated, do not reflect my approach over the years. People may not know how to find it, but in my opinion, this is a lame excuse. Even if other persons have access to your social media, you have access to it too, so therefore whatever is posted, you will be um, seeing it right away just the same. Once you click up on your Instagram, you're going to see it right off the bat and so forgive somebody access so that they can post any or anything and you know double check to see what they're posting that's you know some high level of irresponsibility and this doesn't sit well with you being a representative of the foreign affairs representing jamaica and such things occur on your social media and you're saying that you know it wasn't you it was someone else who has access to your you know social medias me not buy that my people but wanna jump and tell me what wanna say in the comment section and i am not coming out because this is two former people's national party prime minister but at the end of the day they served their due diligence in the past and they were indeed prime ministers of the country so this is a show we say because you support the Jamaica Labour Party, that is why, you know, things like this occurrences can happen with your social media and you just coming out to saying that it wasn't you, it was someone else who has access to your, you know, social media. But right now we're seeing, you know, Raymond Price and he has been speaking out from ever since saying that, you know, there is a time and place for certain things when it comes down to the minister. They shouldn't even be using their social media you know to promote no form of politics and when he said that back then i totally agree with him and right now i'm coming out full force on this one just the same so when you hear what raymond price had to say about it my people i have said it before that the government of jamaica 
at the level of the executive needs to develop a social media protocol that regulates how ministers of government utilize the social media platforms to update the public about their official work and their official role. Now, even if the claim by Minister Terrellong that these posts were done by an officer in his staff are true, that does not exempt the minister from the need to provide a genuine apology to the public. For after all, it is he who is the minister and not this unnamed officer in his staff. And therefore it is he as minister who is responsible for what goes out on his social media to the public. And so junior minister of foreign affairs, you need to come and apologize to the former prime ministers of Jamaica. We don't need no politics in that realm. You're sitting in an office where respect is due to all the former and present um, prime ministers. And for two former People's National Party prime ministers to be blotted out shows that you're still in political mode. And when you're given an office, you must serve in that office for all. Why didn't he blot out all of the other prime ministers instead of those two that represented the People's National Party? Politics all over. And you are responsible for everything that goes on on your social media. And so you need to come out with a public apology or you step aside. That's rude and disrespectful. Businessman Howard Mitchell suggests that the Prime Minister Andrew Olness should consider appointing Member of Parliament for East Rural St. Andrew, Juliet Olness, to the post of Minister of Works. And this came about because, you know, we heard of some news circulating that the Prime Minister will do, you know, some reshuffling to the cabinet or better yet release some people allegedly come this Sunday. The works portfolio has been vacant since Everal Warmington was relieved of his duties by the Prime Minister on February 29, 2024. Mitchell says Juliet Holness has the tools to successfully drive project implementation through the works ministry because this Wolipa building building we share build you know, we're seeing she taking on a whole lot of projects as it pertains to apartments and all of that. 800 million apartments. And so, it could be right that she should be, you know, transferred to that Department of Ministry of Works. And so, who will take up the post of the House Speaker? But may I make going to listen to some more of what Mr. Mitchell had to say. I do recognize that there is at least one cabinet position that must be filled and that is to replace Everald Warmington and it possibly could be an opportunity for the Prime Minister to solve two problems at the, at the same time and move Juliet Holness to that position and could somebody like Delroy Chuck who has experience in there to, to hold for the year or so that is left move somebody like Xavier Main, who is a good lawyer, into justice and who has served, has some ministerial, junior ministerial experience, it would solve two problems because I think Mrs. Holness would be more comfortable than, with heavy equipment than the, the subtle nuances of the, of the speakership. Well, I think Mrs. Holness would probably have to manage herself carefully in that position. But that position is critical now because that is where most of the money is going to be spent leading up to the election. And Mrs. Holdis does have considerable operational talents, and she does have an ability to get on the ground. She's demonstrated that. She also has experience in the area of construction and, 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 and general infrastructure works. So yeah, you're going to get controversy anywhere you go. Well, talk on my people in the comment section and let me hear what Una says based on everything that was said in this video. You know, how do you feel about the junior minister of foreign affairs coming out to saying that someone else who had access to his social media, you know, posted those, you know, posts to his Instagram. And tell me what you think about what Mr. Mitchell is saying, as according to Juliet Holness, be, you know, put in the Ministry of Works position. 
chat up in the comment section my people don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel run go over to my other platform instagram and facebook and follow me over there at anisabel rose check out the youtube store make a purchase it goes in support of the channel check out the youtube membership you get a lot of benefits by becoming a member only a small fee per month to become the member of the anisabel rose movement member shout out goes to angela and ivan wallace big up on yourself my sis thanks for the continued support we do notification shout out in each and every video to be a part of that all you have to do is be the first to like comment and subscribe and you'll be featured in the following video to come this notification shout out goes to pat w big up yourself pat thanks for the continued support from each and every subscriber new viewers come on board journey with me join the family subscribe to the channel like up the video share out the videos support the abr movement by playing your part on the road to 20k help me to get there my people get this video to at least 2000 likes stay tuned for more videos stay tuned for more updates big up on yourself Public service announcement. The Diaspora Crime Intervention and Prevention Task Force and One Jamaica Legal Defense Foundation invite Jamaican patriots and friends in the tri-state area to the second staging of a call to action. Meet us on Friday, May 10th, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Jamaica's Consulate, located at 300 East 42nd Street, Corner 2nd Avenue in Manhattan. That's a call to action for Jamaicans and friends of Jamaica who are seeking the best solutions for Jamaica. May 10th at 9 a.m. At the Jamaican Consulate at 42nd Street and 2nd Avenue. Listen to Reason with Radigan Saturdays at 3 p.m. on Reggae Global Radio and YouTube for updates.